on Outside the Box Reviews, we're taking a look at the Full Moon Toys Legends of Horror Castle Freak figure. Never heard of Castle Freak? Never heard of Full Moon Toys? Well, you're not alone. Castle Freak, if you're a hardcore horror fan, you may have heard of. Another film from the director of Reanimator, starring the star of Reanimator, Jeffrey Combs, and actually isn't a bad watch. I picked it up in the $3 bin at a movie store, having heard decent things about it. And, well, my quickie review is it's not too bad. It's worth a watch if you're a obsessed horror fan. Ironically enough, this figure I also picked up in the $3 bin at my local comic book shop. They have just a giant bin full of Full Moon Toys figures. Now, Unfortunately, they don't have the ones that I was hoping they would, the entire Puppet Master set. They just have some of the less desirable puppets, but they did have the Castle Freak. And after seeing the movie, I wanted to pick him up and check him out. So let's see if I got ripped off for my three bucks. Now this figure does come with some interesting accessories. Here we have the whip, which is not nearly as cool looking as it was in the movie. We just kind of have a spiked gray handle with some very obvious rope hanging out of it and some kind of plastic beads at the end. And of course, it's supposed to be kind of like a big flail and something you could torture your tied up castle freak with or he could torture his victims with. But the one in the movie, I seem to remember having spikes all through the actual whip area here is a much more lethal and menacing looking weapon. But this is just kind of more of a puny little thing and doesn't look much like the one in the movie. Another interesting accessory is the dead cat. Early on in the movie, you see the freak pull this cat back in through the door of his cell and proceeds to, uh, well, chow down on it. And the sculpt on here is not great. I'm gonna say that right off the bat. It reminds me a lot of those figures you'd find at like a Michael's craft store or sometimes Target or Toys R Us carry them. Just the very cheap generic statues basically of animals. And it really has that feel to it, the cheapness of the paint quality. There's a little bit of shading going on here, but nothing great. The blood is decently done, actually. It's very bright red. You can see the white bones sticking out of different places on it. Face is all torn up. The backside, we do get more detail, but there's also an enormous peg hole for pegging it into the display base. So what could have been kind of a cool piece kind of just gets a giant hole punched in it. So that's probably about the best review I can give to this thing. And last but not least, we have our display base. This is a very large display base here. And actually, I think they did a pretty good job on it. We have a nice stone kind of flooring here with some good paint shading. We have three pegs coming up. One for the cat, which will go right about there, I think, officially. But I guess you could peg it anywhere you wanted. But the freak is really going to stand best on these back two. Then we have this very large stone back wall. Nice texture to it. Very kind of lumpy and organic looking. And even bevels off around the edges. And how can you miss the chains coming out of the middle? Bolted into the wall there. Now I'm pretty sure these chains are plastic. The way they're painted, they feel plastic. But now holding them in my hand, they do have a decent weight to them. And they kind of feel cold to the touch. So I'm really not sure if these are metal or plastic chains. I'm actually starting to believe they might actually be metal, which is impressive. Then here at the bottom, we have the shackles, which are rubberized. You can kind of pull them apart, slip them over his wrists, then peg them back together so that he's stuck, chained up to the wall. Really, this is probably my favorite part of the whole figure, this display base. It's really cool, and I'm looking forward to using it for some photo shoots with Frankenstein's monster figures, as opposed to the castle freak himself. And anybody interested, the back is about as plain as plain can be. Now that we have the castle freak figure himself, well, anybody who's seen the movie can tell me there's one major problem with him. Woo! <laughs> That's right. At no point in the movie does the freak wear a dirty, dirty loincloth that I can remember. But they did a decent job on it. It's a nice kind of dark material. There's some really odd colored stains going through it. And these kind of threads coming off that are a lighter brown, which I think is a really nice touch. Looks very flimsy on the other side. I think this could come unraveled real easy. But I don't ever really plan on displaying the freak with this piece. I'm guessing this was just something mandated to actually sell the figure in stores. And not since reviewing the Prometheus Trilobite have I ever thought I'd be zooming back in on the junk of an action figure. But it's kind of funny that they put the loincloth on him because there's nothing here. Now, that's not completely movie accurate, but, well, there was something there, just not much of anything left. So, yeah. I really don't understand putting the loincloth on if you were going to go all the way with it. But in a weird way, I'm kind of glad they didn't because, I mean, come on, it's 
probably a little too far for this figure. Overall, this figure feels cheap. Just having it in your hand, it feels hollow, and honestly reminds me a lot of a Barbie doll. It just has that very lightweight, cheap quality to it, and it's not helped by the fact that the head is actually made of a soft material and has rooted hair. It's very, very Barbie-esque. The hair doesn't even look that good. You can see the rooting on it very easily, especially when it's pulled back like this. It's kind of all knotted up and messed up. Not in a good way. Not in a good horror monster way. Just in a just messed up way. You can try to move it around. Try to get it to look more like it did in the film. I think it was more pulled forward in places. But it's not actually thick enough to really maneuver around the figure too much either. So you kind of have to pick your poison with. It. The face sculpt is okay. I do have to take into account this figure is from 1998. He's an older figure, so he's made in an older standard. He's before all the NECA and McFarlane stuff that I'm used to. So overall, it's not bad. They did capture some good wrinkle details. His eyes are nicely done. The kind of cleft lip with the nasty teeth underneath. Big scar going through his head. And then the paint on him is such a mixed bag. It's kind of ridiculous. In areas like the skin tone where they've added this brown in and even especially his eyes are very nicely done, very well painted. But areas like the bloody bits around his mouth and the scar are just so one no bright bright technicolor red. It just kind of unbalances everything and makes it look very cheap. Coming down the body, a very similar effect going on. A lot of this tan kind of flesh tone with some darker brown. Some places applied very nicely giving it a nice shade. Other places being very very dark and looking like he just rolled around in his own feces, which, knowing this character, it's highly possible. Then there are other areas, more cuts on him. Some of them are this bright Technicolor red. Others are a much darker, subdued tone that works very well. I really like this detail on this chest wound, and even this one on his shoulder is not too bad either. So a very, very mixed bag on this figure in terms of paint. Though I do believe he was more grayish in the film and not this flesh tone, if I remember right. But I'm not entirely sure, given lighting and filters and stuff like that, what color the suit really was supposed to be, and Honestly, he was supposed to be human, so a human flesh tone's not a bad way to go. The sculpting is kind of meh. The ribs stick out here. There's veins going through them. Weird belly button going on. The arms are hard sculpted in this kind of odd pose. The one arm coming very close into the body. The other arm very far out. On his right side, we do have a fist for holding the flail. There's a lot of excess plastic in places around here, making it look very cheap. And the hole is just a pure hole in the middle of the hand. Not actually looking like the fingers gripped around something, but just literally like a drill bit went through his hand. His other hand does have the missing finger from the movie, which is interesting, and some nice long nails on it. So it's not too badly done. Though ironic that he's missing the finger and it comes with a display base where he's locked up because he loses the finger to get out of that cage, so that doesn't really work too well. Coming around to the back, more poop brown, just splattered all over the place. So what might have been some okay sculpting. Got some castle freak ass going on there. Legs are pretty bare, some more cuts and stuff, and we come down to some very dirty feet with some very ill-defined toes. So once again, overall, just a very odd mixing of sculpt and paint on this figure. Some places it works, some places it does not at all. For articulation, the head can, but it doesn't like to, but it can, but it won't. I think it's because it is a soft material when you put any pressure on it, I think it actually bulges out inside the neck and limits what you could do. You have a cut joint at both shoulders, so you can spin pretty much all the way around with it. Both elbows also have a hinge, though they're already pre-bent, so you can really just bend it more which is very, very odd. Just a very strange range on these arms. You can, of course, rotate at the wrist. Then we have cut joints at a V in the crotch here, but you move his legs at all, he's not really gonna stand up anymore. So there's really no point in doing any of this. For a size comparison, let's bring in the Mezco Jason again, which I would say is a pretty average height for a horror figure. That seven inch scale. And we can see the freak is quite a bit taller, nearly a head taller than Jason. I don't remember him being particularly large in the film, so I'm gonna say this is out of scale, but at this point when this figure is made, the scale that we all know for these figures wasn't really defined yet, so can't really ding it on that. So overall, the Castle Freak, now that I look at it more, kind of looks like Alice Cooper on a really bad day. This figure, however, does not get a recommend. There's just too much wrong with him to really recommend him. And as I said before, I think it's a sign of when this was made. If he'd been made five years later, he probably would have been a completely different figure. Or maybe not. I mean, Full Moon 
one didn't last all that long. I think I read they went to bankruptcy not long after this figure came out. And even if they had survived, I'm sure these figures didn't sell particularly well, seeing that I found mine in a $3 bin. But for $3, you know what? If you like taking figure photos and playing around with dioramas, he's probably worth it for that base alone. As I said, really excited to put that with Frankenstein's monster, do some chained up fighting Igor scenes or something. But as a standalone piece, I'm going to say no to the castle freak. But as I said, even though the figure's not great, I do still recommend checking out the movie. Once again, not great, but better than this figure. Where you can find it for three bucks, a much better spent three dollars. Make sure you check me out on Instagram, username Outside the Box Reviews. Also check me out on Facebook, link below. And until next time, this has been our Outside the Box Reviews. Stay tuned for more to come.